Well, when I'm right, I'm right. Don't get so high and mighty, Gordon. If anyone's going to gloat about being right, it's me. Boulder Dash! I correctly predicted the Hulk would put on the Infinity Gauntlet. You also reckoned he'd make the ultimate sacrifice, i.e. he'd die for the greater good. But he didn't. Iron Man did. Not only did I predict that, I also correctly guessed Pepper Potts was pregnant. All right, I'll concede that. But neither of us predicted Black Widow would die the way she did, or that Thor would be fat. No, definitely not. We probably should have put up a spoiler warning at the start of this video. The biggest concern I had for Endgame was thinking all the characters that died would be resurrected, thus undercutting Infinity War's impact. But I must say, they pulled it off splendidly, and I am quite happy with how it ended. Which is more than I can say for Game of Thrones. Oh no. So you didn't like Season 8, I take it? No, James, I did not. It was a complete mess. Rushed, poorly paced, poorly written, a disaster in every sense of the word. I mean, what was the point of the White Walkers when they were so easily dispatched? And don't even get me started on Daenerys burning down King's Landing. Okay, the Walkers were something of a letdown, but as for King's Landing, I don't think that came out of nowhere like so many think. Explain. For one, there was that vision Danny had in the House of the Undying back in Season 2, and since then, we saw escalating examples of her cruelty. The only reason why it was excused is because she visited it upon bad people. She wielded absolute power without consequence. It was inevitable she was going to do something terrible with it. And I think that's what made her the true villain of the series. Or Bran, according to some theories. Am I the only one bothered by his becoming king of these six kingdoms? No. It makes absolutely no sense for him to be ruling anything. I just can't understand what happened with Game of Thrones. It started out with a roar and ended on a whimper. Maybe that was the problem. It peaked too soon. And let's face facts, the end of any series never lives up to expectations. When ours finally concludes, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who'll hate it for one reason or another. You may have a point, James. I'm still disappointed, though. Ah, well. It is just a television show when all is said and done. Nothing to go to war over. Speaking of war, let's talk about Star Wars. Oh, aye. That was a brilliant teaser they dropped last month. <laughs> Would you believe I didn't catch on that laugh near the end was Palpatine's? You didn't? No, I thought it was Snoke's. Then I heard Ian McDermott appear at the Star Wars celebration, and then I was like, Say what? And seeing the remains of the Death Star, very intriguing. I wonder if J.J. Abrams will dare to reintroduce the Ewoks. If he does, it'll probably be in an offhand manner. And I think that was only a teaser. When they release the full trailer, I'm thinking it should follow the same setup, only this time when it fades to black, we hear... <gasps> that would be awesome. I wouldn't set my hopes too high for that, Henry. I won't. I've learned to temper my expectations when it comes to Star Wars. Kind of like that new game they showed off at E3. You like to see the gameplay footage? Indeed. I found it quite entertaining. I may very well pick it up when it's released even if it is an electronic arts title. And let's not forget about Cyberpunk 2077. All together now. Whoa. Whoa! I did not see that coming. How on earth did they manage to get Keanu Reeves into the game? CD Projekt Red is no stranger to having celebrities in their games. They got Charles Dance to voice the Emperor of Nilfgaard in The Witcher 3. As for Keanu Reeves, I can already see the Cyberwick memes just as I've seen plenty of memes concerning that abominable Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh aye, the trailer was terrible. Still, I am surprised Paramount actually pushed back its release date to fix it. Indeed. Makes me wonder if that was their plan. To put out a shoddy trailer? Well, put out a trailer and gauge the reaction. If it went well, they would press on. If not, they would go back to the drawing board, so to speak. That way, when the film is released, it would have gotten plenty of press about how the studio listened to the fans, and people would be drawn to watch it. I think you're giving the studio too much credit, Gordon. They certainly didn't do anything about Ghostbusters 2016 after that trailer dropped, and I don't think any amount of tinkering to Sonic will do it any favors. I have to agree. Video game movies don't have a good track record. The only exception seems to be Detective Pikachu. Have you seen that yet? No. I'll wait until it comes out on Netflix. Oh, by the way, I was thinking of going to see Endgame for a third time. You lads want to come? Oh, aye. 
Yes, please. Ned. Yeah, so? Ow. I wasn't expecting that. Not so much fun now, is it? No, it's not. And let that be today's lesson. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor, and it can never be used against you. Isn't that from Game of Thrones? Yes, it is. Despite how it ended, I'll always remember the good times. Hear, hear.